Next up, let's talk about adjusting templates. The templates in CakePHP for especially the forms uh, will most likely be uh, adjusted on your side or need to be adjusted on your side depending on what kind of theme or kind of styling you want for your app. But if you want to do that, the first thing I will always recommend is look into our CakePHP book. And in here we have our uh, form helper um, documentation. And if we look for templates, we have a separate section for customizing the templates the form helper uses. And basically the main part you will have to do is uh, go into your view class. So we uh, go into our editor, go into our source view app view because this is our main view class for our, our HTML templates. And we add this snippet, which is also here uh, copy pasteable from the book, uh, where we just say loads the form helper and we specify a speci uh, we specify a config parameter here that we want to load the app underscore form config uh, from our config folder. So that is what I what we have here. I have that here specified. And then we can go into our config app underscore form PHP. I just created that file and also copy pasted that example in here with some minor adjustments. So um, let's just explain what we can define in here. Uh, we have an input container and we have a form group here. These two are um, from the form helper itself. So if we now go back to our, um, to our app view, we specified that we want to load the form helper. Well, the form helper is a cake PHP internal class. Uh, so we can also go into API cakephp.org and go to the form helper. So you can click on the GitHub icon as well. So this is the cake PHP internal PHP class. And if we go into the default config, we can see here a bunch of template configurations, which are, as uh, you may have now already connected, the same as we can specify in our config app underscore form file. So any default template you want to adjust, which you can find in here, you can copy paste that to your app underscore form PHP file and adjust whatever you need. So again, the input container is basically the wrapper for all our inputs. So if we just go and say test in here as well, and I go back to our page and reload the page, look into the generated classes, we can now see, okay, it's input test text. So I um, forgot the space in there. Uh, so yeah, this is if you if you of course want to have default classes or default HTML generated for all your separated uh, form input containers or input HTML wrappers, but sometimes you also want to only have specific variables for specific inputs. So like in here we have the edit block post form and we example given want to have a special class on the container for the name so we can do that as well we can go into our template into our template blog posts edit and we can specify on our this form control where we output the name an additional config that says add additional template variables to that output and here I just named it custom class and the value is YouTube. So we can copy paste that custom class as well. Go in again into our app form class in here and say, okay, output that custom class we provide via our template as well. So if we now go back in here, we can now see we have input test and YouTube just on the name input form, but not on the others. The others only have the default 
input class definitions. All right, so these are, I would say, the main things you will need to know how you can adjust form templates. But sometimes you also want um, to have a bit more control or have a bit more um, pro programmatically control of what is happening in your templates. Because, well, we can also yeah, just uh, switch input and label wrappers via the form group. That's why I've also copied it in here. So now first the uh, input is now outputted and then the label, depending on what kind of templating you want to build, you can do that as well. But again, as said, sometimes you will need a little bit more control other than just replaceable tokens because you can't um, do like if statements in here or uh, some more um, elaborate configuration or elaborate uh, programmatic control over what is being output. And that's why you can specify a class name whenever you are loading your view. So again, this is in SUAS view app view, where we are loading our helper. And we can specify that it should use a custom or user-defined class as the form class template, so to, uh, so to speak. Uh, so here in our view helper, I created a class called my form helper. That's the same name as the my form, just without the helper at the end, because well, it's all uh, cake PHP helper in the end. And here we I have just a basic PHP class, so just the namespace definition, the class name which needs to be the same as the file name. It extends the cake PHP core internal form helper. And here we can now have more control over what is being done uh, inside our template functions uh, via the form control or form input or whatever you're using. And you can now, here is just a very simple example, prefix some of your inputs uh, by just adding test at the beginning. So again, we specified the class name. We uh, just overwrote the control method of the base cake pitch form helper. And now if we go back, all of our inputs, which are um, printed in our template via the control method have test prefixed in there as well. So yeah, as you can see here, it, it is also of course happening before the wrapper because the form control um, or the app form templates, which we use here or which we define here are used inside this form control method from the cake beach view internal logic. But again, if you need more control over that, I usually just copy paste that whole block. So I would have to copy paste this whole method control and then just analyze whatever is happening in here. So as we can see, okay, here we have labels, we have inputs, the input container is being built in here. Here we get the label, here we get the input and yeah you can then have more control over what is happening inside of your uh, template methods and template functions. But yeah, I would say that is mostly everything you need to know uh, for adjusting form templates. It uh, may uh, differentiate if you want to do the same for the HTML helper because um, HTML helper, there we are, um, because the HTML helper also has templates, um, but I don't know out of my hand if this also works via just, um, let's basically just see uh, if I go into the this loads HTML and say app HTML. And we try that as well. I haven't prepared that, but let's just see. Uh, and then we go into um, helper, uh, no, HTML helper, 
and we let's just say override what we want to override let's just try to override the meta meta tag which should also be in the header um, let's just add a test attribute at the end um, make sure that we are loading that HTML helper via that and let's just see uh, no it doesn't work the same with the HTML helper um, but again you can specify your own class uh, and your own HTML helper class where you can override that config um, this kind of template loading is currently just in the form helper as far as I can tell um, but maybe we can also add that for the HTML helper as well if enough people really want to use it or if there is enough um, desire for that but yeah I hope you learned something, you know what to do, and I will see you in the next one.